Hi, I'm Brandon Jury, and this exciting edition <laughs> of, of Killing with Cubase, we are going to talk about all about creating new tracks and all the possible tracks in Cubase. In this section, let's talk about creating new tracks. Um, and as we just did in the previous video, this little uh, navy blue color, I guess that's the color, I'm not a, what do you call that, color theory? You know there's a theory on colors? I learned that recently. Anyway, in this little uh, box here, if you right click and you'll see all the possible tracks we can add, um, we're gonna see stuff that, and this is another one of those things that scares new guys and it doesn't have to. Um, for example, uh, add audio track is what you're gonna do. Uh, if you're a non-electronic music person, you're going to do that 100% of the time, or close to it. Um, if you're an electronic per music person only, you're probably going to be doing MIDI tracks 100% of the time. And it's important, again, we've, we've covered this before, but don't overload yourself with stuff you don't need to know. If you do get curious, you might say, hmm, what's this instrument track business, and how can that help me? And it probably can. Tell you the truth, I don't even know what instrument tracks are. I don't care. And you could probably be, you could probably probably be saying to yourself, um, "What the hell, this guy doesn't even know what an instrument track is? Why am I watching his videos?" Well, the deal deal is, I'm pretty much a master at the aspects of Cubase that I've mastered, if that makes any sense. And that's the stuff I'm going to teach you. And you're free to to dig deeper if you want to, but you just don't have to. There's only so many hours in a day, and you don't have to learn everything in this this damn program. So don't, as my advice, make some songs um, and learn when you feel like it. Anyway, so we have MIDI tracks, uh, and that's something we'll get into more for electronic type people or guys using uh, modern drum samples, uh, Superior Drummer and BFD2 and things of that sort, addictive drums. Um, effects channels uh, can be added here too. And this, this is when we want to, want to add reverb um, as an auxiliary send, um, things like that, and add channel. And then boom, I'm moving really fast. I'm sorry, I'm wound up on coffee and I always do fast and in a hurry. Um, Group channels can be added right here. Um, and that's like a subgroup. We want, we want to combine 12 drum tracks into one. We do it with that. Marker tracks I almost never use, but um, that, that's handy if you want to use, like push three. I think it's three, maybe it's F3. I don't even, I think it's th whatever. I, again, I'm, I've only used these a few times. Um, if you want to say, okay, on the bridge, you want to put a marker and you can push one button, it'll take it exactly to the marker. That helps some people. I don't find it overly helpful. Ruler, I don't even deal with. I don't even know what that is. Signature track, that gets in the time signature junk. Tempo tracks, I do use, particularly with metal bands who want to um, um, have a lot of tempo changes. I also use it for if I'm doing a, a MIDI type track, or maybe I program drums, bleh, and I want the, the song to escalate um, without anyone really noticing, one thing I'll do is start the song off slow, and then it's kind of a steady ramp up. And we'll get into that a little bit too. That's more advanced, but um, it's just nice to know that feature exists. Trampo transpose track, uh, I don't even know what that is. I'm assuming you change the keys or whatever. Um, don't even know. And video track, Cubase lets you toss in one video track, which is very useful for if you're scoring a movie. And you'll have, I think it's F8. Let's see here. Yeah, there it is. You can have a little player going. And I always like to get a really low quality uh, video file. And then that way, if I'm scoring a movie, I can sync it up perfectly to the video. But again, it's pretty advanced. So um, all the different tracks, so let's just kind of go over some of them. Let's say we want to add a new audio track to the one I already have. Um, we can select, you know, 10 or 20 tracks at once if we want to, if we're in a hurry. If we know we're doing a live band, for example. Uh, we'll select mono, again, because we're just using one microphone. Okay, and then we, we kind of covered this last time when we use the Sunshine Bus. Well, we can use the Sunshine Bus here, too. And now if we arm both of these at once, let's name this uh, twice shy. Uh, if we recorded both of these, you will see both because they're getting the same input and see it's an identical file. Bing, bing. Okay, so normally you don't want to do that, but the, the point is that you can um, have multiple tracks using the same bus. And that's really handy if, let's say, uh, this is my main vocal from before. If we wanted to add a new track and then do harmony, uh, 
Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a singer. Leave me alone. I barely know what harmony is. Okay, so I got that going. So if we want to play those back. Now we're talking. Does that sound like Miss Piggy and the Muppets a little bit? Or not? Anyway, um, so you can use the same buzz for multiple tracks. And so a thing I do in the middle of a session quite often is somebody says, oh, let's do another harmony or let's double that. I'll just duplicate the damn thing. And then I have to rename it. So we'll call it Thrice Shy. And then I do have to delete the, that track there. So in slow motion, oops, see that's a habit right there. I always hit Control S, another huge tip, which is a save button, which I haven't saved this file yet. So let's do that. I'm just pushing some numbers. Now if I hit Control S, which you'll hear me do probably once every 30 seconds because it's so ingrained in my brain. Um, you know what I'm doing. So, oh, did it again. Okay, so in slow motion, let me read. If we want to, let's remove this track. So we'll do a right click and uh, it's, it's different for different situations. But remove selected track is work. Okay, now again, we want to duplicate this track. So we'll just go right click and we'll go. And there's a bunch of the little features you, you should probably go through and look, learn to. Um, uh, what they do because a lot, a lot of these little guys are worth investigating there's a lot of good stuff in here that'll save you a lot of time if you invest it so anyway uh, we'll duplicate the track and that's made a carbon copy and that that's all the inserts that's all the uh, sends it's identical we have two of them and the same uh, audio files are there now if we want to do a harmony we obviously don't want that track there so I kill it I delete it and uh, we need to rename it because it says copy of twice shy so we'll go back to thrice shy and that means, so let's just say I wanted to add a, a third part. And then we just hit play and record. Boom, 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 boom. And you get the idea there. Um, I don't really have to play that for you. I don't want anybody to get sick of this junk. But anyway, um, so that kind of covers audio tracks. And if we want to do a stereo one, maybe a synth, maybe, um, uh, maybe a stereo microphone, who knows, whatever. Uh, same thing, add audio track and stereo is right there. And if I record, see, I need a stereo bus for that. So if I select Sunshine, I'm not even sure I can. Okay, I can. But this is a mono signal, so it's only going to end up on one side. It's looking for, for one microphone or, or uh, one channel for one side, and it's looking for another channel on the other. And so, okay, well, hang on. I made a liar out of me because Cubase adapted. Um, that's just because Cubase is smart. Um, Wow, they've gotten better. Okay, I don't. I'm so used to half in the select um, mono uh, for mono tracks, so that's kind of a, a anti-idiot um, thing. Yeah, I'm actually impressed by that. Okay, well now we know. So I guess that solves that problem. I think I've answered that question on the forum 150 times. I made sure to put it in like my, my kilo home recording books just because of that. Okay, so that's adding audio tracks or removing them. Now let's add a MIDI track, and same thing, I right clicked on the little navy blue section, and uh, and then nothing too fancy with these, just the number you would like to select, let's say we want three. Okay, then go MIDI, one, two, and three. Now, um, these don't have quite as complicated of routing in them, they don't have the F4 in and out stuff like we covered before, they don't need buses because it's just MIDI data. So. What they do need, however, is um, uh, you need to send it to something that makes noise. And so uh, we'll get to this stuff later on because MIDI is its own thing and doesn't apply to everybody. But if we wanted to create MIDI tracks, so there they go.